Do you want coffee? No, why not? You're the one that gets up at the crack of dawn. Don't you want some coffee? How do you get up at the crack of dawn and not want coffee? Hmm? How's that work? I work it out. You work it out? Okay. <laughs> I work it out. So this is part two. Part one will be up here, up here, up here, up here. It'll be up here in this section. You do not need to watch part one to enjoy the hot mess that you will see in part two. And this is the continuation of our extreme declutter. Didn't know it was gonna be an extreme declutter when I started it um, because I didn't know actually how much stuff we had. Um, so starting down a minimalism journey, doing a lot of research, trying to get a handle of what the definition means to me and my family. And so here we go. So we just got back from vacation. We're about two weeks into minimalism. This is what I walked into and I cried. I was so emotionally distraught by walking into so much stuff that we had just left there when we walked out the door that I I just emotionally lost it. I was in tears. Stuff in the window, stuff on the table, so just still that pile of basket. Look at this window I had already done. And I realized that part of it wasn't that I changed my habits so that's what we've been doing lately is just evaluating our habits and what needs to change so this is a screenshot from a clean with me that i did what i want you to do is look at what's in the red circle that's my office or my desk our kitchen counter look at that it is perpetually causing me stress <laughs> with all this stuff because i don't make it a habit to put things away so that's one habit i needed to change so when we got home, I cleared everything off the counters to start over, and then I started to organize my papers into things related for work, um, projects that I was working on. I'd realized I had started nine projects that were just kind of lingering on the counter. And so I situated everything and got organized. office section in our playroom basement but we just can't get to it yet because of all the stuff so for now I've confiscated some sections in the pantry because this is all my day-to-day -day stuff that I need for my job and for our house and so now I've got it readily available here instead of on the counter. I've been reading a lot of books about minimalism in the last couple of weeks and one of my favorite quotes is from Francine J. She wrote The Miss Minimalist. My goal is no longer to get more done but rather have less to do. So now I don't have to clean off my countertops in order to clean my counter. It's actually facilitating a cleaner house to have left stuff and have stuff put away. So this is great. This is what my counter looks like these days. Amazon is probably in shock right now and trying to figure out a new revenue stream because this revenue stream is done. Daily problem for me spent way too much money on things that we never ever ever needed just ridiculous rationalizations for things and my husband agreed that I needed to analyze my spending habits and figure out where I needed to change next I tackled this hot mess this is 15 baskets of homeschool stuff materials and on top are games and the globes and I was just fed up with everything when we walked in the door that I just attacked it. And so I started pulling everything down. I put some stuff in the basement, cleaned it all off, and just decided to stick with our two baskets that we mainly use. Our morning basket and our afternoon loop basket, which are two of the five that I ended up leaving on the shelf. Brighter, brighter than a dime. 
And this is where I started to get emotional again because there's so much stuff and I didn't know what to do with it as I was pulling it off the shelves or what I wanted to put back on. And so I got busy on the bottom. The bottom two rows are for my kids. I have books or puzzles or something because it's really their height. And then from the baskets up, the top three rows, that's really what I've claimed as my own now. So you saw me hauling it all away, right? And here's where it ended up. In the space that I've already cleared, I put more stuff because I didn't know what to do with it. This basket is primarily what we use. It's called our morning basket. It's got math, reading, running, spelling, a couple of read alouds, and a couple of subject rotations. And that's what we use. I didn't need 15 baskets. So here's where I ended up. I just decorated those top two shelves. The middle shelf is the baskets of homeschool and miscellaneous things I like to have handy right there. And then the bottom two shelves are for my kids. You know, I asked my husband for forgiveness, but I haven't, and he of course immediately gave it to me because he's incredible, um, but I haven't forgiven myself. And that is definitely my hurdle now, is forgiving myself for the mistake and learning from that mistake and moving forward. Um, in some areas of the house, I have really minimized and it's been so great. It actually lifts my mood. Um, when I see certain things that are decluttered now and are set up with purpose and it's easier to clean and uh, it's actually really great. So the feeling that that gives me is pushing me forward. There's a lot of irony in having a dozen books about minimalism, right? And you're trying to minimize and you check out 12 books from the library on minimalism. But here we go. These are the ones that I've been reading up on. I also have two that I've been reading on the Kindle. This pile is the, you know, the stuff that I'd brought down a couple days ago. And then this entire section, this here, and this. And all the cabinets in there. That is what remains of homeschool curriculum related items, unit studies, that kind of a thing. And what I need to do, I need to get rid of a lot of it. There's also games, books, and puzzles in this mess here. The other thing that I ended up with was a crazy amount of empty bins that I used to think would organize me at this time. So what do I do first? Puzzles, games, kids books. <sighs> puzzles seems like the easy way to go. That's that's something I can tackle. So, puzzles. Okay. To the sun, oh no. You shine brighter, brighter than a diamond. Your shine is lighter. for me to like a, I'm having a bit of anxiety right now about this it's I'm having a hard time doing this so I'm just gonna force myself through this and start with games and puzzles so much guilt is that we end up with so much stuff that I thought would be great for them that I didn't realize I was buying two of and just spending this money so needlessly that I need forgiveness for my husband and I need to forgive myself and let go of this and you know I really thought 
honest, honestly, I thought I was going to come down here and basically throw everything away and not have a problem. And it's a, it's a lot harder than I was expecting to declutter. And I'm going to say I'm a homeschool hoarder for sure. I, I don't know that I'm a hoarder in the rest of the house, but I am a homeschool hoarder <laughs> for real. Like there's so much stuff and I have duplicates of things that I didn't even know I had duplicates of. And I'm recognizing the problem. I'm on my fourth year of homeschooling and definitely made some, definitely made some bad decisions. <sighs> okay, so the stairs has the puzzles and then these are the games that I could put my eyes on readily enough. And I was right, that felt better because it's clearing out a bit hard to tell but it is clearing out some and it and it puts me forward in the progress so now what I'm gonna do is deciding what I'm keeping and what I'm donating So I feel better about this. That's what's left, right there. Games and puzzles. And that's what's going away. All that. So, donating twice as much as I'm keeping. And then this pile right here, is gonna go to the some other homeschool families at my co-op. I'm gonna offer it for them, if anybody wants it. If not, it'll go in the donate box. So I feel good, that was, that was a big leap. All right, all right, I can do this. Okay. So I'm a very much what you see is what you get kind of girl. So I'm very honest about things and what you see on here is very much me in my life. Um, and I honestly thought that I was going to declutter the house over a weekend and have changed my life. And that is not the case. And minimalism is a journey. It is a place that I want to be at every single day. And it is far more intricate a journey than I was anticipating. Um, once I started reading about it from various experts on the topic, <clears throat> I really understood that the definition is different for each person. And you have to figure out what the definition of minim minimalism is for you. And for us, we started with decluttering our house. We started, um, I started examining, <laughs> it's me, not my husband. I started examining my spending habits. He does not have spending habits that we <laughs> need to minimize. That poor man is married to me. I spend the money. And so the last three weeks has been very therapeutic and cleansing. And <clears throat> I've really come to terms with my spending habits. And we are talking about 25 years of spending habits that haven't changed. I spend money. I do. I, it's terrible. It's a terrible way to be. And we have three little kids and I, I should have been more frugal than I, than I before now, but I'm here now and I'm accepting the past and looking forward to the future. Thank you for watching this second video of the series in extreme decluttering my journey to minimalism, 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 minimalism.